city of angels is black and gold. You are listening to the Heart of LAFC podcast. And now, Joseph Zacker. Greetings, Los Angeles. Welcome to episode 338 of the Heart of LAFC podcast. That's right. We're going to call this one Let It Rain for very obvious reasons. The drought is officially over. We are back, at least for one game, uh, getting a great score, 5 nothing, complete blowout of Nashville. There's reasons for that, and we'll discuss it. Uh, but what the heck, man? We got the win. We got what we needed to do. It was pretty. Uh, for the most part, Tony... He had a good time. We saw that. Uh, and uh, Araceli, I know, who was enjoying it, too. Uh, that's who we've got on today. We've got Tony and Araceli. Uh, I'm going to throw it to you guys right away. Araceli, how are you doing tonight? I'm actually doing very well. I'm a little bit on the sore side, to be honest, because I went to Royals training earlier, and I clearly underestimate that stadium. But other than that, I am very happy that my 3252 merch is finally here. I absolutely hey, love it, especially the pin. But yeah, I mean, it's just been a great weekend overall. Yes. I mean, again, score proper. It was fun. Great. Of course, as this week has progressed, it's been even better. Right, Tony? Uh, with some amazing news. I'm going to let you break this, man, and talk about it. You'll start the combo for sure. Breaking news. Who have we got and who do we think we've got? um i'll start with who do we think we got um it's been confirmed or confirmed for a couple of news outlets nothing official from the club that uh uh drew has come to lafc uh but that is not the confirmation which is kind of cool because we also got another uh how do you say frenchman uh mr luxembourg but yeah <laughs> luxembourg <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. yeah. French, French. Um, Maxine, Maxime, uh, Chan, Chanel, Chanel, yeah, yeah, is confirmed. I, dude, we are defender. all gonna have to brush up on the French guys because with Bwanga out there too doing what he does, we're gonna have to get it down. I mean, mm -hmm. if Griezmann ends up showing up at some point, this is gonna be a wild moment where the food will be better, <laughs> and we gotta get used to how to pronounce these names. But yeah, so we've got Giroud, we've got Chanel, uh. I think the big thing from the Chanel signing is we have an MLS Cup winner and a guy that was thought of as the heart and soul of New York City FC when they made that run. Um, another another leader. You can never have too many leaders. And we've seen on the field we've needed leaders, right? Um, so you have another natural leader, and we've got him in our ranks, and it didn't cost us too, too much to make it happen. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, he was getting minutes at the club that he came from. So it's not like he's riding the pine. Uh, no, this is a this is a legit player that's going to have a good impact on our side. It does create a bit of a logjam at center back, but that's a good thing, right? Competition is always a good thing, and aging legs tells you that it's probably good to be able to move people around as well. So good news there. And, of course, the other big news, but before I talk about him, Bam's on tonight too. He got online. Let's get him going here as well. Welcome, Bam. How are you? tired um it's my friday now so got a drink cracking on so looking forward to it i like it i like it it's kind of mine as well i'm not going in tomorrow i got stuff so it's my friday too we can celebrate we can properly celebrate of course it might not be the right bevy for it but hey you know it's okay it's all right uh so yeah the big news of course is olivia Giroud coming here who is let's be honest producing very well for ac milan He's probably going to make the French squad. How could he not? Uh, for the Euros, legit, you know, striker. Yes, he's a little bit older, but it really doesn't matter when you're producing. That's the name of the game. That's the point of it. And he fills a role that we just don't really have right now. And that's that's really nice. And he's also a player that's willing to actually make some movements, make some adjustments, play play as a, as a hold-up forward as well. Again, flexibility, finishing power, you, you kind of get all of it from this player. We're not going to get him for a while, of course. It'll be probably League's Cup when we'll finally see him on the field for us, you know, hoping that everything stays healthy and perfect and, and he's rested. 
Uh, that's what it's looking like. It's probably going to be a League's Cup uh, debut uh, for Olivier Giroud. So we have to wait. We have to be a little bit patient. We got to let the boys that we currently have, uh, the young guys, basically step up and uh, get us to a point where we're still in a competitive situation, which <laughs> they play like they did last week. Uh, we will be there. Uh, but, yes, uh, it's going to be a little, little while before we see him. Good news is not only do we get him for the playoff run um, and maybe eight league games, that's it. Um, you get him next year, too. Uh, we have him all of next season as well. So very, very good news for us. It's the guy we were looking for. Is it delayed? Yes, but we kind of expected that. Bam, I mean, we're not too, too surprised. I mean, that name has been kind of floating around a while, but it's nice to hear it from the big names. Oh, 100%. And you also look at two is when there's a certain person on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, that announces this stuff, you know he's dead on the money. There's one person that until he says it on on social media, I don't believe anything. You mean when you get the let's go and the American flag pops up? That one? Yes. Yes, that one. An Italian name, speaking of a French player, you mean that? Yes. Yes. There you go. We all know who it is right? We have to name names. We just, if you know, you know, and you, and you follow the account and that's just how it's done. It has to be this way. I know we're not talking about Slippy, but hey, Slippy, we love you, man. And I know you're, you're crying tears of joy today and I can't blame you because it's... it's oh, I thought we were talking about Slippy. Is that, that's the only person we talk about, right? I, yeah, he, he verifies too. Uh, he got his verified source. So there you go. <laughs> the day to have him on so you got to get him back on again so we get to talk about him and uh yeah uh so Giroud, yeah he's on his way that's what they're saying um i'm not sure when the official announcement will be but enough names are talking about it that we got to feel pretty good about the situation um what else is going to happen in the lean up i mean we still have room for one more designated player right bam i believe we still do so yeah let's see who that is we're not done we're not done it's good news Good news. Tony, are you excited? I hope you're excited. Oh, I'm excited. Like I said, he's like a number nine that we need. Um, yes, he is of a of 39 young, but uh, <laughs> he is what we need. Again, he's a very underrated number nine throughout his career. He puts in goals when he needs to, and you know, this might be just the you know, uh the uh the pretty much the hitman that we need since we haven't had a number nine uh mind you this past game we didn't need it too much but again when it comes down to those very hard fought games we're going to need that number nine 100 to just put it back in the net yeah and a player that isn't afraid to be physical too um we're not going to push him off a ball he'll give it back we we haven't really had a guy capable of that for a while I think what Dio Monde might be a name we could bring up for back in the day when a guy could physically play and get get beat up and still hold the ball. Um, but now you have a guy that can do that. So it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Araceli, I know you've been you've been enjoying the news coming out as well, and hopefully we'll see you out here to see him as well. But, hey, uh, your thoughts? Hey, I'm already looking at airfare while as we're talking about this because I, I definitely, I mean, I, you kind of already know, as you said, I am very excited for it and to see him join the LEC squad and the talent that he can bring. It's just so much potential. And honestly, there's just really not, it does leave me speechless to a point of, I just can't believe it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, again, when a name drops like this, it's a big deal. I mean, the age makes it a little bit hard to believe it happened, right? Sometimes you avoid players of that age. But again, he is so relevant right now in the way he's playing, the way he's approaching it. A, a renaissance for him. I mean, there's no doubt. So it's it's a little surprising to see it. I will say this. He has an eye for beautiful cities. I, I don't think there's any question, right? We've got, what, Paris. We've got London. We've got Milan. and <laughs> yeah <laughs> la so it, it's not bad it's not bad um he knows where to go uh so yeah, i'm looking forward to it that's for sure it's gonna be good um and definitely we'll get your guys reaction as we keep going on this episode today uh but of course in the mood of celebrating let's of course talk about the last match and what happened there which dude it was rocking it was rocking at bmo 
I was enjoying myself. We know Tony was enjoying himself. Uh, it was it was a show. It was definitely a show, and uh, for very obvious reasons. So yes, five nothing, absolute demolition job of Nashville. They were coming off, of course, a very congested schedule. They looked at the legs were tired, but you know what? That was us last year, and karma is what it is. Uh, yeah, uh, nobody gave us any passes. Right when the when when the games got tough for us, we just had to deal with it, and everybody kind of went, "Well, hey, that's what you wanted." Well, Nashville, you got what you wanted. Uh, yeah, you want to be in b- the big show, you got to handle it on the weekends too. So there it is. Now, what did we show up with in this game? Of course, the four three three, and we are having debate, debate, debate of what they're going to do. Is it going to be different? How's it going to be different? And Dolo just went, "Nah, we'll work it out." That was the approach. Now, what was the big change, of course, the force change? Uh, Hollingshead had to play at left back, of course, which brought Palencia onto the field. Otherwise, we're looking at the same lineup. Now, that was a big deal, though, because now we had stability on both sides, right? Um, and a player that wasn't in the lineup that was struggling a bit, let's be honest. And it it showed in this game. Um, it really did. The other side, of course... Nashville had to come out with what, what they could, their best they could. Uh, they had Sturge up, st- up top as their target man. Mukhtar was the playmaker. Mule, Boyd were their outside mids. Uh, Yearwood and Anunga, uh, I'm mispronouncing his name now. Uh, defensive midfielders, you had Mayer and Kalaman as your center backs. Moore and Washington up as your wing backs, right? And then Willis, of course, in goal. No shock to line up, let's be honest. Even though they were tired, this is what the best they could offer in the moment. I will throw this over to you, Tony. Give me the highlights and the lowlights, sir. Um, so the highlights, of course, was a very score, very eventful first eight minutes. Um, Shaq Moore uh, got a yellow card in the seventh, but then not even two minutes later, uh, Mr. Tillman decides to finally end the drought. For LAFC, an assist by Aaron Long, and then after that, it kind of went to the races. Like uh, another nine minutes later, but Dini ends up scoring a penalty kick to put it up two nil, ending his scoring drought, and finally put it in the back of the net since for a while. And just kind of got chippy after that. We had red yellow cards by Hollingshead, Palencia, and Drew Yearwood. Again, a very eventful first half. The thing that, unfortunately, should have been a much higher scoring game, but we just couldn't put it away. First half or second half, we couldn't do anything as well. I mean, in reality, it could have been easily 8 nothing. Um, They should have had one, I'll be honest. But it, yeah, about an 8-1, uh, if you really looked at the quality of chances. One of them, I was actually celebrating because I thought it went in and went, wait, what? You yeah. were laughing about it because it's like, done we got this and then the crossbar gets clanked and and yeah my gosh that it seemed harder to miss than to make to be honest Mm -hmm. but it is what it is right i mean at five nothing you kind of you you get the mulligans you know well okay (laughs) you get a pass it's five nothing uh but you know what It, it 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 was the performance our guys needed they needed to get a celebration match like this something where everybody builds a little bit of confidence, feels good about what they're doing. It also gave us a chance to bring in some of the youngsters for extended period of time. Mm-hmm. That was needed as well because they need the minutes too in a situation that they could be more creative in in the moment, the way we were dominating this thing. And that, that of course, is a big story. Um, yeah, I, I was – what you needed from it, what could you take from Nashville except, dude, they were dead meat. I mean, what, yeah. what could you say? First half, they they fought, you know, they put the fight in, but boy, oh boy. Um, yeah, they they were they didn't have answers for much of anything on this. They couldn't keep up with the play. Um, eventually, when Joe Willis got the red card, that was just, dude, all bad things. Um, mm-hmm. Now, was it? Clearly, it was. Um, I was I mean, surprised he did it. I gotta be honest, I was. Um, I'm not sure if he really thought he was that close to the line or what, but yeah. It is what it is, and he, he got to take a shower and got out of that that nonsense for sure. Um, Aracel, your, your your thoughts on the match? I really did not have a chance to watch the match in its entirety. I think I minute because I was watching Carson 
um, hand sporting Zaz to them. So that that was fun, but getting to see LAFC pull off that win just made the night even better. <laughs> kind of saved the night, right? I mean, pretty much. Pretty um, much. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys want, to, Tony? Uh, what do you think about the kids that came in? How, how did you think? How did you assess their play on the day? Um, they were doing pretty well. Again, Odas did have an opportunity to get on the scoreboard, and he just barely missed the ball. Again, we needs to uh, put that away. Again, um, Martinez is going to be a very, um, very nice project that everyone's going to be watching because it's like you, he has a skill, he has everything, but it's just also the passing is really well with him. Um, finishing needs to be a little bit better, but again, that comes with playing time, age, you know, a lot of minutes on the field during a real game um again during practice or little warm-up games in between in in your, in your team practices like games like doesn't really count because you're not getting the full effect of everyone's like 100 percent. but he's going to be a nice uh, addition to the the roster once he's there 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 were a few plays that he did where he was thinking on a level that nobody else was on where the cleverness kind of <laughs> it took the other players out of the play. Um, there was one where a Twesta, I mean, he he didn't read it. He didn't read the dummy, right? And it got past him. And he, he was hitting his own head. Like, he's running back the field, and he's just knocking his own head. Like, why did I not think of that? The kid did. And there was another chip pass that he did. There's this composure and 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 honestly, his, his fun take, clever take, um, is refreshing. For a player his age to see them that comfortable <laughs> with the ball and willing to take kind of the crazy chance. Um, the no look passes, again, the chip passes, the dummies, all that stuff already. It is in this young stage of his career. It, it says a lot. Um, good on the scouting, right? To get this guy in. Um, there are moments where we look more like a playmaker than a winger, um, but, which is refreshing. It was good. I can't wait to see him play more. Um, the kid needs minutes. I think the more we give him, the more we're going to get from him. Uh, I was, I was thoroughly impressed with what, I, what, what he was showing in this game, um, which is the way to do it. Right. I mean, you're putting the dagger on these guys, you get the openings, you have to do it. And that's exactly what he was doing. And that, that's very, very refreshing and, and happy. You know, I'm really happy to see where it's at. Of course, moving on to it, let's keep the happy news going. LAFC two. Yes. Uh, they're looking proper. Right, Araceli? Oh, yes. And before I actually get to LEFC 2 news, I want to kind of roll back real quick to the Nashville game because I'm not sure if anybody really noticed this, but on the bench was uh, Mueller and Rosales from LEFC 2. Even though they didn't see any playing time, um, it was very interesting to see Mueller already on the bench so quickly, especially after their first win. So not only was he on knows, the bench, he, might he was, see he was him warming up. First... Yeah. He was warming up as a possible sub mm-hmm. at, at one point. Wasn't sitting on the bench the whole time. They were they were actually warming him up. Really? So there was a chance. Yeah. I mean he mm-hmm. does it with most of the guys, but still he was fully integrated in the squad. Mm-hmm. Dressed for the day, ready to go. Um huge reward for his work, right? No, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I think it just kind of speaks to his talent. And we, we just might see him with the first team a lot sooner than we thought, honestly. But kind of going back to LEFC2, they did get their second win. They are now uh, their back-to-back wins after cooking up the Dynamo in a 3-2 to two victory at home. And speaking of Nathan Ardaz, he actually opened the scoring in the 16th minute. Duenas won the ball from Dynamo, sends it to Ardaz inside the box, who cleans it off with a nice finish to give LAFC 2 the early lead. And then after that, it kind of faltered for a bit with Dynamo um, leveling in the 29th minute. uh, Exxon Arzu, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I I will be honest, it was a true... Bender like Beckham type of moment in which he rounds the defense. He slots the ball from a very tight angle, um, you know, le- leveling the match. 
moments later in a very similar fashion to Duenas, um, Dynamos, uh, Stefan Anor. He does this the same as Sanders tries to return the ball to Romero. Stefan beats Romero in a 1v1 to pull Dynamo ahead in stoppage time going into the second half. There was a hard foul on LEFC2, and I apologize, I cannot find the exact moment that the foul happened, but it results in LEFC2 winning the penalty, which Mueller steps up. He converts to the spot for the equalizer in the 66th minute. And in the 79th minute was very interesting and absolutely chaotic in the best way possible. <laughs> um, Terry passes to Darbo in the buildup, who hits the crossbar. And as a dynamo attempts to clear it out, ends up scoring an own goal, which ultimately gave LAFC2 the win. So they are still leading the rankings for the second week in a row. And they just been doing well, even though this last match with the Dynamo was very chippy at moments, just to see the boys that they are gelling well compared to the first season. It is very good to watch, at least in my opinion. But next up, they have their first road trip this Sunday when they travel to Denver to face the Colorado Rapids. That game is set to kick off at 5 p.m. Pacific time. It will be shown on Apple TV. Yes, I'm aware Sunday is also Easter, but if you have a chance to tune in, I highly recommend it. I'm sure there'll be a few travelers up there that maybe that's good news for them. Maybe they'll spend a little more time up there. Um, yeah, those who have been to that stadium know that pretty much the fields are just outside. <laughs> that's the way it's built there. <laughs> um, so you don't have to go far to watch number two. That's for sure. Um, great news. Great to hear that we actually have a winning side now. Um, I know it's a short part of the season, but it's good to be on the right side of things early. Um, and then with Mueller again, getting the penalty choice, right? This is good. This is a good thing. He's stepping mm -hmm. up and taking leadership. Uh, it's what we need at, at the second side. We need guys that are just hungry, right? And it's finally looking like, well, it took us a year to figure out what we really wanted to do and feed a team, right? and what level we need to be at. And now they've obviously figured things out. It'll be a long season, but the signs are signs are promising, right, Araceli? Oh, no, it's definitely going to be a very long season, even though next pro's season is significantly shorter than MLS. It's only match week two or going to be match week three that we're now at this point. But just looking at the signs... It is going in a positive direction, and I hope it continues to do so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, I see Bam is on. I think he's ready to come back. So let's get him going here. Welcome back, Bam. Uh, uh, I know you love technical updates. issues. <laughs> let's hope it works for the rest of this bad boy. All right. How are you doing, by the way, sir? Yeah, not too bad. Glad we got the win. That was the main thing. Right. And yeah. with your now, reaction, I think we'll th throw it off. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Now, like, I'll happily say I didn't watch the whole game live because the second half I was actually catching up with some mates that I do every year to watch the F1s because it was in my hometown. So that started as we were going on to the second half. So it was, I was my attention was elsewhere. So I did end up watching it when I got home later on, and we just played a more complete game, and I was glad to see a complete game. Yeah, you got to take advantage of, of anything wrong with your opponent, right? I mean, you just got to get the job done. And they did. And they did it in style. It was pretty. So all good things. All right. I see some comments out there. I just want I want to jump on and get from you guys. I see about 10 of them there. So let's get that going. Again, thank you guys for jumping on and sharing and saying hi to us. We, we love the conversation. That's what this show has been built for in the first place. But let's do it. Let's see where you guys are at on this. Who was the first in the mix? Mark Lopez. There we go. Says only one team in the West has three wins. Everyone else in top seven has two. Fact plus new signings makes it feel like we aren't off a, at a cliff anymore. Right. I mean, it would have been rough if we lost this one, though. But it, it, it didn't happen. Thank goodness. Reality is what it is. Yeah. Things look much more promising. And now that the talk of signings, it just gets that much better. Again. 
Huge moves by the team at this point. Good news. Uh, Dave Gomez is on. He says, morning, Familia. Olivier and Maxime Newsday. It totally is. A different Maxime, but a good Maxime. We're in good hands there, that's for sure. Uh, Burke in the mix. He says, just a slow start. We, well, we might not win Supporter Shield. We can get a couple of cups. I'll lay black and gold. I will say this about the Supporter Shield. We might. Uh, look, the other teams that are competing for the Supporter Shield have much busier schedules than us. That it, they're going to have injuries. We know how that feels. They're going to have shorthanded play. They're going to run into buzz saws like like Nashville did. We were the buzz saw this time. The others will run into trouble, and the ones you think are the favorites will have problems. Rest assured, it is a long, long season. And whoever looks strong right now, they could look like minnows by the time we get to August. You'd never know. That's the fun of MLS. It is not predictable. It is beyond unpredictable at this point, especially with with big names moving back and forth and other teams getting linked to star players. Summer's going to get a little interesting. We'll, 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 we'll really understand it by the time we get to like the League's Cup to know where teams really are at. Um, Mendo's on. He says, what a way to come back from a scoring drought, right? Just make up for all of it at once. Uh, he says, Drew's signing. Uh, wow, the impact you'll have, not just on the field, but the supporters as well. Oh yeah. He's a highly marketable dude. Um, it's win all the way around. This is one of those coup type of signings. Um, not the first coup signing we've had, but this is big. It is a big deal. Junior on as well. Good seeing you on here again, sir says long season. Everyone sky is not falling. FO wants the club to succeed just as much as we do. I'm sure. Uh, steady pace in the first half of season, then heat up close to playoffs is key to MLS success. Exactly. And now you're going to be heating up with a star player who's just coming in. So no one really knows how to read this guy outside of seeing what he does overseas and how he responds to MLS defending. And they're going to have to get used to him in a really short amount of time before the playoffs. Talk about fun. Uh, he, he, he could light some people up. That's good news. Um, here it goes. Junior says, would you be okay with Vela taking the final DP spot with Giroud incoming? No. Um, I, I think he still doesn't need the DP slot, especially now that it's not going to be a full season from him. Right? I mean, the, the, this pushes forward. That's less pay as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, I, I still don't. I think something else is coming. And maybe Vela finally goes, all right, well, I want in. We'll see. Uh, I'll go to you, Bam. What do you think? Do you think we're going to give Vela DP slot or there's going to get something else worked out? Something else worked out at the moment. Yes, he's been good for us over the last few years, but with the possibility of getting bigger and better DPs, why waste it? Yeah, it's tough, right? Uh, but you do pay people for what they're going to do, not what they did. <laughs> right? I mean, that is the point of it. We know what he did, and he got paid for that. He got paid a good a good dollar for that. What can he do now? How can he contribute now? And is that worthy of a designated player slot? That simple. Tony, where, where are you going on this? You want to throw a DP Vela's way or? No way. Uh-oh, can't hear you, man. Sorry, but no way. Um, high Tam deal, uh, but not a DP. Unfortunately, I think that could be slotted for somebody else in the in the summer that we don't know about. But I don't see it going to him unless it's for like a year and then or the end of the year, and we can do it. But I don't think that's how a DP spot works. Right, and then again, he hasn't signed yet. Mm -hmm. Time is time is just moving forward. What if he decides to just decide to come in in the midseason? Then you're, it's a much cheaper contract. You can still play him pretty darn well for what's left of the season. Maybe that's what he's going to do. Who knows? Um, he hasn't left. He hasn't moved on to another team, so something's up. I wouldn't walk away from this one yet. I don't I don't think we're done with with Valley. He's not done with us, but I think they will find it. They'll find a solution. Uh, Dave's on here again. He says, I've learned no matter how painful in the moment, trust the process. That's been the LSC mantra, right? Just trust the process. See what comes, comes from this. Um, it's worked out pretty well for us so far. 
uh, for a young team that we are. Endo says that last LAC two goal for the victory was a blooper highlight. Welcome to LA. Welcome to uh, MLS next. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Uh, Mendo says he went to his first LAFC two game, hoping the squad keeps him and I'm going good that you went out there. Anybody to go out there. It's a fun time. It's a good time. It really is. Um, good conversation that that's for sure. You'd be surprised who shows up for these games. It, it, it's a good time out. That's for sure. So yeah, go check them out. Doesn't cost too much either. So yeah. Um, and it also says Wonga's power shots usually bat, uh, bang the post, and those two goals he finally scored were curlers, right? I <laughs> that crossbar still cracking me up, man. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, there we go. Soccer USA brings it up that one touch pass from Martinez to Kike, a classic wall pass, a wall pass. It works, right? No movement, just clank it off the shoe wherever any part of the body to get it to the other player it was pretty man that that those little things those are the little things that again a young player is pulling this off man either you got it or you don't right kids got it it's beautiful to see oh david day says is this olivia is a rude guy like a gareth bale i don't think so not mm -hmm. at all um bale of course winger variety not a hold up player looking for the cross, looking for the quick slash run in. Zerud's a target man. Target man all the way. Um, he can play back to goal. He can run in on a play. Mul multi no, multiple tools, but it is central. He's focused on central. There are times where he will play deep as well um, and play as an outlet. So the, the big thing with him is he's more physical. Physical batters are something that he's not going to run away from. That then he also had the durability that I don't think Bale's had, right? Um, I'll go to you, Tony. Your thoughts on, on Giroud versus Bale in terms of comparison? I mean, to me, they're very, they're very different. But oh yeah, they're very different. Bale was more of a winger. Uh, number nine can move around, and for, again, speed was his thing. Uh, Giroud is just the speed is not his thing. I, I, I'll... Speed is not yeah. Speed is not his thing. I was trying to figure <laughs> out. I think the best way to explain him. In terms of, of like a player we've seen in LAFC is uh, Chicho, very good with the ball, very there when he needs him gets physical, but on a higher level at different teams, and you know has shown for country and club that he can, and when the big moments come, he'll be there to score those goals with with his head, with his foot, whatever he needs to get in. So that's like the best way to explain Drew, I guess in a LAFC term where if people want to know, like don't watch, you know, European football or, you know, Syria or, uh, or probably the best person to even talk about this again is slippy with him at Chelsea and at mm -hmm. Arsenal for a point too. Uh, but again, he's like a very underrated number nine. Yeah. I mean, again, he produces every mm -hmm. year. He produces. He has great matches. Sometimes he has off matches. Guys, we'll talk about that too. He does have those turn off matches. But overall, he does step up, and he will mm -hmm. step up. Uh, we we know this already. He's proven it. Again, all time leading scorer for France. Like that's pretty pretty darn big deal. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And again, it's going to be something in the middle. Now, am I going to see this guy legging things out to the corner to press players? I'm not sure we're going to get the get, get that from him like we've required from other guys up front. I don't think that's going to be the game for him. But will he pressure in the middle? Definitely. The other big thing that he's good at is up in the air. Mm -hmm. he, he's about, I think he's at a 61, 62% clip at winning headers. Yep. But pretty, pretty good. Um, so that that's going to help as well. The physicality um, is is there. And that that is something we really... We haven't had, you know, the skill and the physicality together. We really haven't had. I can think of maybe combining two good players we've had in the past, and he's got both those tools. Speed, like I said, and, I, and Tony said, it's not. I don't think that's his game at all. Nope. Um, it's more of reading the game and and making the right touches at the right time. That's what we're going to get from him. It's an intelligent player. Um, that that's the difference. It's not the turn and turn and boost. You know, it's it's more like 
turn and shoot, turn and pass, and then receive the return pass after the fact. He'll have fun with Martinez. That that that's for sure. The kid's gonna have a good target there. <laughs> That'll be fun. So yeah, that that's what you're gonna see. A very different, a different vibe in the best way. Uh, Soccer USA says, uh, with bringing in Chano, does that move Segura to the outside depth chart? I think with bringing in Chano makes a big question for Aaron Long. Is he going to maintain his spot? Because does he take it from him? Is that a now a battle? Chano's not a guy that's going to sit at three. Nope. He's fighting for the top two. It's going to be interesting. He's not getting any younger, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, this guy was was heart and soul for NYCFC in a cup winning year. Thought he'd retire with them, and then ended up getting shipped off, and was shocked in that moment. So he's back in MLS. I think that's what he wants to do at the end of the day. Anyway, um, he's happy to be here. It's a good move. Good move. So we'll see. It's I, I think it's more of a battle for starting, but Segura. Again, we know what he's capable of. We know how long he was out for. He could threaten as time comes through because we know how good he is. It's just the process is what it is. They will get their chances. We know that much. It's it's nice to have four veteran potential leaders, actual leaders, <laughs> as your center back option. Kind of an embarrassment of riches. I'd go to you, go to you, Bam, on this. I mean. Your thought now on the center back situation? Could someone get shipped off too? Could that could that be something in the cards? There could be, but I also think because we had that defender get injured earlier on to in training, I think this might be just a cover. Um you also get too is as you get deeper and deeper into the season, some players will be going off to European champion, the Euros, or there's all other international tournaments too that we'll will lose players for. So LFC could be just trying to bank up this for that. Right. Right. You need depth. It's a long year. And League's Cup too. And apparently Open Cup if we choose to feel the growing up side. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, it's a good thing to have. Stability is good. Oh, gosh. Soccer USA says El Trafico goal scored over under. I mean... If you've watched Carson this year, and we'll preview that one, of course, next week. I mean, over is the story. There's just too much, too much going on for both sides right now, that we we could be in a in a, in an actual shootout here. So, <laughs> but we'll get into that. I mean, Bam, do you want to even get into it or we'll wait? Because it's it's coming fast. It is. It's going to be a whole episode just on that. So, it has to be. Has to be because it's the, the rivalry is there, and we finally have a rival this time that looks sort of complete, right? They, I think, kind of found themselves. They took the LAFC route, quite literally, um, to to compete with us. We'll we'll get into it. That's for sure. Um, yeah, David. He, he said right before I think it's one game before uh, League's Cup. You know, for for Giroud is where he'd be eligible. But my question is, if this guy is going to play a full season for AC Milan, then go straight to the Euros. Do you really think the minute he's eligible to come to us, he's going to jump in? I think he gets a couple of extra weeks off. We just look at two, the on. the Euros final is July fourteenth. Yeah, yeah. Then he takes a couple of weeks off. And then he has to get into the squad and get used to the squad. <laughs> he is who he is. I mean, we know, but you don't force a guy of that age and stature, right? You, you, you let him kind of get into it. <laughs> um, and if he's feeling right, he's feeling right. We'll see how he's feeling after that tournament. Because, I mean, also expect France could be in that final. I, I don't think there's any way around that. At least semifinal, I would expect for France this time around. I don't think I'm acting crazy. I think it's kind of obvious, you know, semifinal or final would be the expectation for them. So, yeah. Um, Junior says, yeah, prorated salary sounds like a great deal for Vela. I mean, that it, 
gets the vibe. I think Scarf was talking about that too. Um, as they, you know, to play games with the numbers, prorate it later in the year and he gets a good rest. Uh, Soccer USA, Jinyak coming soon. I don't think so now. Uh, you know, I think I think we're good. Anyways, that guy talks so much smack about the league. I don't think he has any interest. Right, Tony? Um, no, I don't think he. Sh- I, I think he retires there. To be honest, like he t- retires with Tigres, he's become a legend there. Um, he's pretty much a Mexican citizen at this point. As if you've seen clips of him like singing to Mexican songs to other teammates while he's playing in warm ups and like wearing the jerseys during like the World Cup during the, during the World Cup finals when it was on and everything like that. So I think he's more of a you know. He's going to retire legend there, and I don't think he wants to burn bridges as well. So he, he's in his happy place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, David Day. He's, he's throwing stuff up today. Now he's got a memo show to San Diego, San Diego FC rumor. I heard this. It would make sense for them. For them. I guess it's not even, but it doesn't make sense. Um, as most of you know, who follow the Mexican national team, you have there are two Ochoas. There is World Cup Ochoa and Club and Country Ochoa bef- at, during bef- uh, eh, before and after the World Cup, which everyone's at. And he is not he is not the greatest keeper. It's it's his past his prime. Um, unfortunately, I know goalkeepers can keep going into their late forties if they want to, but he. He's not he's not the same Ochoa as we all once knew. Again, World Cup, somehow he just puts it into another gear and just shows up. And going to San Diego makes sense, as you were gonna say, Joseph, because of it the it's almost a border town to Mexico and a lot of you know bringing Mexican fans and bringing that first, like you know, that's what you usually do, you know, sign your the big Mexican player to attract the Mexican community, support it, and then go from there. But I feel like that would be a, in the, depending what the contract is, it could be a good move. But I don't, if they're announcing him going there, he has to probably going to get a DP spot, which is kind of crazy to say for a goalkeeper here. Right. I mean, the Roman Berkey treatment, right? Uh, get your resurgence over here. I'll make your money. So sell a lot of goalkeeper jerseys. Something that usually doesn't move that well. <laughs> well, this time. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. They need some names, and maybe that would be one of them. That's their problem, not ours, because I don't think he's heading our way anytime soon. Uh, Mendoza Vela seems to want a starting position, but don't see why coming off the bench uh, is an issue for him. I don't know where his head's at, to be honest. I think it's about the money, and that that's what it's about. So... Um, you know, the value you have is not the value someone else has, and you're not going to get what you think you're going to get. So, yeah. Um, Mendo says, Atuesta wants a chill revenge for that slimy red card a few years ago, right? Uh, yeah. We're going to think of that one forever. That's for sure. <laughs> Wait, 7.5 in goals over under? Well, I mean, that's just... I mean, talking about like a five three man, like to get your overs. Am I seeing that correct? That's insane. Yeah, I would think a three two might be it. You know, something like that. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Mendo wasn't Guignac part of that scuffle with security, Paul? Yes, <laughs> yes. And he's said he said some really nasty stuff about MLS. So. Um, yeah, the vibe for him ain't in it, is not here. Uh, that, that's for sure. So for a while, I thought it was cool, but now, now we're good. We're good. We need your root, man. <laughs> we're fine. All right, guys. Thank you for the comments. Awesome as always, which of course moves us on to LASC community news. I'm going to hand this one over to you, Tony. What is going on in the community, sir? Um, what is going on is, of course, um, 3252 membership is available. It's still going on. If I know some of you have already gotten your package, I know I have. Sally has. 
I could show you mine, of course, the scarf and the beanie. I should have worn it today, but I kind of want to keep it crisp for a little bit longer. So for the people who are listening and can't see it, um, I'm holding up the 3252 beanie. And then, of course, the scarf, which, of course, it says on it, this is Los Angeles. Um, of course, different tiers. This is the second tier, the one I have. And where is the pin? Do you have the, the pin on you, Araceli? Because I don't, can't seem to find it. I had it for a second. Oh, there. there you go. Yeah. So Araceli is holding up the pin. Kind of a bigger pin than I've seen us use. Wrong one. There we go, Araceli. Thank you. Um, so it's a bigger, it's a little bit bigger pin, wider, I would say, because the bigger, because lengthwise, size wise, I think last year's pin was a little bit bigger, but lengthwise is a little bit bigger with the wings. Uh, so that's going on again. Sign up. This helps out all supporter groups with their numbers and, you know, also helps out the 3252 with TFOs, flags, uh, drum repairs, and anything to help out, you know, any little things that we need to keep the 3252 running. Um, so if you haven't signed up, make sure you do that before it closes and spots do run out. So there are the other tiers if you want to support with, you know, Donations to it, if you want to do it, there are different tiers. And then, of course, the highest tier, if you want, you get a nice little plaque that you get uh, supporting businesses, uh, supporting like a business. If you're wanting a business, it says like supporting business owner, supporting 3252, and it has your name on it. So that is, of course, going on, um, as well as still accepting uh, help or, you know, projects for the 2024 art show with Black Army AIM in 3252 on June 30th. Again, here, here's my spiel with it again. Uh, showcase how you feel your culture is represented in the city of Los Angeles. Los Angeles is a melting pot of cultures, whether or not you're born and raised here, the city makes you feel like we belong. Painting, sculptures, photography, etc. all mediums welcome and accept the deadline submissions is june 23rd reach out to ba gives back at gmail.com again really cool event goes to a great cause in aim and so if you are an artist and trying to you know submit something you know reach out uh, if you want to help of course uh talk to your supporter groups or if you're not part of one you know reach out to ba to ba gives back and see what you can do to help out if you want to do that if you are unaffiliated with and just want help in a 3252 member um with that as well uh again for uh dean i knew is doing a unite for women so and to get benefits for feminine care drive um in east for the east los angeles women's center they need pads tampons panty liners toothbrushes Menstruation cups, sanitizing wipes, deodorant, and period wear. So if you have those and can donate, um, hit up D9U. They have a, probably a link, and they can figure out a drop-off for that. Again, this is to benefit women who can't afford this stuff. Again, there is a pink tax, unfortunately, and things do go up higher for that. Um, and people can get a hold of it sometimes just because of you know their situation. And... To get into watch parties, there is something that's going on. Uh, crew is doing the clothing, uh, clothing drive at their watch party. Uh, donate gently use or new clothes to, in, to those in need. Anything helps, please feel to reach out to Ricky and Alejandra for any questions you may have. It starts at their watch party 130 and ends to the end of March. As they said, um, or maybe June or probably the end of March, so another day, extra day or something like that. I'll get you more details and I will post it on our socials when we have I have the opportunity. But that leads to watch parties. Uh, not all watch parties are available at the moment. Again, it is a Wednesday. Sometimes we do this Thursday, so there's more watch parties to to watch. But the two that have been that have been released that I saw were Crew, of course, at Angry Brewing, Angry Angry Horse Brewing at 603 West Whittier Boulevard, Montebello, California. Um, and then Black Harmony will be at Mount uh, Low Brewing Co. at 150 East Street, Joseph Street, Arcadia, California, 91006. Uh, game time is at 1 o'clock, so be there early for all those. I know parking usually is a problem, but early game as well. So if you can make it out, make it out. And that yeah, is all for your meetings. Game, definitely. We'll look for the parking situation. Get there early. <clears throat> Guaranteed. 
Good stuff. I'm going to just say this back to the membership. The beanie is high quality. Like I didn't understand the 3252 would be fully stitched into it. It is really quality. Um, I was wearing it the other day because it was just really nice. So they did good. You guys did good. 3252. Well done. Well done. All right. So I guess that brings us to the black and gold vinyl club minute. Um, do we have any nominees? I have my nominees, but does anybody else want to throw one up there? I've got a nominee. All right. Doing, it, doing a it. deep dive with a new player being from Luxembourg. I'm like, let's have a look. What does Luxembourg also compete in? The Eurovision. So this year, Luxembourg is back in the Eurovision. So with that, I've gone with the person that's representing them this year. The Eurovision is Tali. That's T-A-L-I. And their song Fighter, which will be their song that they used for Eurovision this year. Wow. Well done. Well done. I was going to go big. I mean, I was like, okay, well, Giroud's coming. French. Daft Punk, right? Why would you not pick Daft Punk? So kind of in between two, I mean, Random Access Memories is freaking amazing. There's Instant Crush on that one, right? Right? Um, But, of course, then there's Homework, right? Around the World. Or you want to get crazy, you go with the Tron album. I, you know, that's cool. Too. That's a good album, though. That's like a really good soundtrack, just because it's like Daft Punk and it's a very futurist. Again, I'm a I uh, dude. I, I got both, man. I got the regular and the Derez version, man. Because yeah, it's, it's just good. It's just good. Do you, so, yeah. you guys know about the Tron album, don't you? You know what they did with that, don't you? Yeah. How they went Daft Punk make this is the our concept for it make the album and then we'll do the movie around your album yeah i know it's so cool it really is yeah I, i've got mm-hmm. both both of them the the remix and the, the original one and it's just yeah it's daft punk guys uh, you, you can't go wrong you can't but eurovision man we brought up eurovision tony and this this soundtrack that he's gonna create he's gonna have to actually listen to eurovision <laughs> songs which is just I, that's awesome man yeah, but Eurovision's like what most people don't understand is Eurovision. People have listened to Eurovision; they just don't know it's Eurovision. Um, True. The True. biggest one, the biggest name that anyone knows from Eurovision. And I'm not saying that all of them don't become big, because so some there are some big stars in Europe. But Abba, Abba was part of Eurovision, so yeah. and that's where they got, you know, they blew up and then moved forward, going on to their the careers that they had. So. Again, Eurovision is slept on. It's not the biggest thing in America at the moment, but surely, but slowly but surely, it's becoming more known out here. Oh, yeah. the proper but, but, is, though, that, yeah. You also look fun. at it too, like the winners from a few years ago from Finland, Lordi, like the heavy metal rock band that has amazing costumes. Like they got big <laughs> because of Euro- Eurovision. Man, Australia is a part of Eurovision for some reason. How did that work out? Yeah, That's how did that work out? Episode, I'm sure. Yeah. We, got, we got an invite years ago, and they just never kicked us back out, so we get to go. <laughs> Too much quality. Too much quality. And you watch the show. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's fun. It's fun, guys. Dig it. All right. So we've got our vinyl club band. We went crazy for this one, adding albums left and right. But when you get big news like what we just got, have fun with it. All right, so moving forward, moving forward, of course, we want to talk about the match to come. Some of us have bad memories going up to Colorado, that's for sure. But I'm thinking we might get good memories in this process. Uh, Again, we got the rest of a whole week. We've got players now showing up. Got opportunities out there. Feeling a lot better about things going into this match. Of course, their record is only one, two, and two with five total points. We're two, one, and two with seven points. Again, early in the year, nothing to get freaked out about. Um, last five games for them. Bam, do you want to jo- throw in or you want me to go with this one? Uh, you can go with that. All right. So last five games, they've got all of one win. <clears throat> you saw the record. And that win was a away win against RSL. Okay, we'll take that. Um, they did recently lose, of course, to Houston. Uh, and they tied Seattle for the last two matches. Not the most impressive situation, let's be honest. 
um, especially losing 1-0 at home. It was a controversial game, though. I got to say there was a head injury that probably should have had the game called back. Counterattack from Houston. They score on the play. Players were pretty livid thinking the play would be blown down because there was a guy with a head injury. It got bad enough to the point where the manager for Houston actually it looked like he apologized to the manager from Colorado at the end of that thing. Uh, but that's how it ended. one nothing on a controversial goal. Yeah, there you go. There's always laughing because she knows it was a little bit interesting. Replacement refs. Vibes, man. Uh, <laughs> it happens, see? Uh, and so basically they're, they feel hard done and they got to bounce back. We know how this goes too. Hard done in matches where we shouldn't have been. Now, total goals, they've got five, we've got seven. Five of our goals were in one game, right? Uh, goal difference are negative three, we're a positive one. Um, only they only got one registered assist this year, so that's a little a little interesting. Um, they haven't managed to score more than one goal in any game so far. So production is not a thing for them right now. Let's just be real. Uh, what are they looking like? What are they fielding? Well, in the Houston match, of course, they did field a 4-2-3-1 system. Uh, Bam, did you get a chance to kind of get a inside information on these guys this week? Uh, this week, um, like they were, last game, they were missing from Beto for international duty, so he should be back. Um, and there's they had um, Lofferson out as a questionable, which he might be back. He always likes coming back playing against us, and they are missing um, Ronan and Daniel Chachon um, with knee injuries, okay. so they'll be out for a while. So. So there's, there's some issues in hand lineup-wise for these guys. Not where they want to be, that's for sure. Now, what did they show up in the last game against Houston? Uh, Stefan, who was their big signing, right, goalkeeper, uh, was in goal. They had Maxo and uh, Abu Bakar as their center backs. Rosenberry and Vines as their outside backs. Uh, Bassett and Laras were their defensive midfielders with Mihailovic being their Hacking midfielder Harris and Fernandez, of course, were on the outside with Navarro as the target striker. No shock, it was almost the same the game before, except that Yappi was playing out on the right rather than Harris. Um, back line they had uh Bombito that game before rather than Abu Bakar, so there could be something going on there. I would think Abu Bakar though would be the guy, I wouldn't be shocked by that. Uh, it's kind of a, a weird lineup because of the injuries, because of the issues with it, with what's going on with that side. We all know they haven't been at their best for a while. So Colorado's kind of in, again, a transition situation. But they did spend a little bit more money this year. So we'll, we'll really see where that's going to be. Um, Aristotle, you got a chance to take a look at these guys. What are your thoughts on Colorado this season? I haven't had had a real chance to look at Colorado because I mean let's be honest their record kind of speaks for itself it hasn't improved as much since last season but I do want to kind of ask you guys out of curiosity if you haven't heard the news the strike is over with the refs pro is back they will be back this weekend enforcing the new rules so I'm kind of curious of what your thoughts are about that well, I mean, they wouldn't have lost one nothing if they were enforcing the rules, right? Legit. Legit. It would have been stopped, a head injury. <laughs> like <laughs> right there is the difference. They we've had games. I mean, do you think a veteran referee is gonna put up with that lousy weather in Salt Lake? No, they've got enough guts to stop it. Right? They've got a union to back them. They're not scabs. Simple, right? It's not one man against the world. They have a union. Uh, I think, to be honest, we're in, we're going to be in better shape because of this. Uh, we're starting to see the fray, right? We, it's last week really starting to stand out as the games are getting a little quicker, more competitive. Those refs were hitting their limit. We know this already. So, yeah, uh, the veterans come back. They know how this is done. They're used to it. Um, they've got to work back, of course, too, because it was a work stoppage. So we'll see how that plays itself out. And of course, I don't, do we have our assignment for referees yet, Bam? Have you had a chance to even look? No, because the strike yet. just ended. So a little mystery as to who we're going to get for this. And legit, there are weird matchups for us with the referees that we do know that. So that's okay. Better the devil you know. Um, and 
we'll, we'll cover that, of course. Uh, Araceli, I know that I think they were negotiating like into the middle of the night over the weekend, right? I mean, it was really recent where we all got, all got hammered out. Yeah, no, it was very recent. I think they broke the news first thing uh, yesterday morning, if I remember right, because that was pretty much the very first email in my inbox that morning. And then immediately after, we saw, at least for the next pro side, we saw the the assignments for our matches for this week. And so mm -hmm. they, ha they haven't announced it for the MLS side, of course, but I am very curious, like you said, of who will be assigned that particular match. Yeah, it, it's got to be tough. I mean, I would figure in such a short setup, it's going to be somebody that's based more near mm -hmm. to there rather than flying cross country. I mean, they're going to do logistically what they can do to get this going. But, hey, the data is there. It's fine. The new rules need to be properly enforced because there are some good ones this year, especially with head injuries and time wasting and all that. We need people capable and who have actually trained up for it, and that's what we're going to get. So. All good things. I mean, you don't want to, you don't really want to cross a picket line, man. Like, let's be honest. It's, it's what's supposed to happen. Um, and so, yeah, we'll move on. That's what we'll do. Um, and, and it's a seven year deal to it runs until the January 31st, 2031. Through the World Cup. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, we'll get more details on it as well, I'm sure. To see who who actually won on this, but I get. Let's be honest, we all won on this. For the quality of sport, we all win. So let's go. It's good. Um, let's see other things to worry about. Of course, our lineup. What are we gonna field in this game? What's it gonna look like on the road? We've had a couple interesting games. We've seen a couple players feature well, both for the top side and the second side. Um, you're on the road. You're in a situation where you will have to manage your subs because you're playing at elevation. Some guys aren't used to it. Again, we've had a lot of changes in the lineup. How are they going to feel it? What's it going to look like? I'm going to go to you, Bam, first. What's your back line going to look like, sir? Back line? I ain't touching it. I'm leaving the same as last game. I'm with you, man. Hollings head on the left, right? Yep. Let's do this. Araceli, what's your thoughts on the back line? Um, make that three. I agree. Don't, no change. You, unanimous almost. Let's see, Tony. Tony? Uh, Shake his head. No, I think uh, Campos goes back into his spot, to be honest. I know Palencia has it, but I think uh, Campos comes back into the slot and Hollins goes back onto the right. Oof. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, you're going right back to traditional. Mm -hmm. Of course, that would lead us to midfield. And since you were the guy talking about it going back to back, right? What's your midfield looking like, Tony? <laughs> I, again, <laughs> would want the change, but for this, like, I, again, Atuesta, Bogus, and, uh, uh, Ilya, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ilya. That's I think I'm gonna go with that. That's who I think is gonna come out and start. That's would be my ideal starting line. But if I'm gonna keep, if I'm gonna go compost back, since we're pushing, we'll just put, put more pressure in the front and have Ilya and Twessa kind of Ilya more come in the back and Twessa coming back help if he needs to. Oof. Okay, so there it is. A little bit of a change from him. A wobble, we'll say. <laughs> uh, Bam, your midfield. After that game, I'm like Tony, this bogus going back would be nice, but I don't see them changing it. I think it'll be exactly the same. So the Atuesta, Tillman, Tillman's been looking at it, right? Uh, yeah. Ilya. Okay. Araceli? Um, definitely Ilya, because I think he's more accustomed to the altitude than I am. Oh, let's be honest, that altitude is, it, it kills you. <laughs> um, <laughs> a Twesta and <sighs> I want to put Bogus there. I'm with Tony in that boat, but I have a feeling Tillman's going to start. Okay, which then brings us to the striker situation. And Arisale, I'm going to throw this back to you. Who are your strikers? 
Or your attackers, I'll say. Um, Bawanga, of course. Alvera. And I guess Bogus, if he's not put in the mid. No shocker there. Back to you, ma'am. Keep it the same. Same. Tony, he's the guy with the difference. He switched up his lineup over there. Who's your front line? Uh, let's just switch it up even more and say Buanga, Martinez, and Ordaz. The children. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> going young against these guys. I mean, Abu Bakar versus Martinez is kind of be it could be comic gold. Let's be honest. Um, you could turn that dude around 25 times over, and it would be really beautiful to see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to lean more towards Dolo doing Dolo things and being trust the process. It worked last week. We stick with that last week. Um, and I think that's what it's going to be. Um, yeah, I, I think this is going to – I do think he's going to – Go that way. I do think also that Hollingshead will now be on the right side. And so I'm going with Tony's back line as well uh, because he wants the kid to work things out. And then when you're playing a team that's got one win all year and has scored a grand total of how many goals? One per game. Let the kid get a workout on the left side. Figure things out. I think he's trial by fire at this point, and they're going to let him work it out. Yes, sir. I'm going to call it now. And if it will look at me a bit weird, Mueller will get a run. I mean, they might need to with the altitude, right? He, get some guys he will get field. a run. I'm going to say he's going to come on at this 70th minute. He'll play the last 20 minutes. Then he'll stay there and play for the twos the next day. Busy boy. He's young. They can do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I, I, would, I would love to see an interview. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I think... Um. Campo will come on at half time. There'll be that half time sub. I'll save him for the second half. Yeah, because I can't I can't see Hollingshead going a 90. I can't see Oliveira going a 90. I can't see, yeah, Palencia going or what classical. Yeah. Uh no, I, I just can't. The, the the older players are going to have to get subbed out. There's going to be a point where Ilya is probably going to get moved off the field and it's us that will drop low. Right, you kind of expect this to happen at some point. You know, the, the typical move where he brings Bogos back into the midfield at some point in the game. Expect that, I, I, you know, and then you, and then you switch something out up top. So, yeah, it, it, they're going to be pragmatic in their approach. I think. So we shall see. We shall see. Uh, Tony, what do you need to see from the boys to get a result? Because we've had some sketchy results up there. Um, honestly is just show up to this game. I know it's always a hard game in general going to Colorado. Uh, and I'm just saying in all sports, like yeah. if you don't train there, you don't understand the, the altitude, the, the air is just very cut off. So it's just, just to play our game, not over extend ourselves and finish our chances. Again, it's until they show me that they can finish all our chances. Cause again, last game, Yes, we did win 5-0 and, you know, put away the chances that we had. There were still a lot of missed opportunities where there should have been goals and should have been higher. And But it's until I have confidence they can finish, that will be the other. That's, like, my biggest, like, thing that I have, I've had for them. But overall, just play the game, play the games, and then if we're down, then show that we have that dog in our dog in us that we always had for the past two years to come back. And, you know, so when it comes down to crunch time, we can go back and be like, do you remember when we played, quote unquote, on Colorado, we'll say, since it's going to be like, and we were down, mm -hmm. we came back and won it or we came back and tied it. And so I would write, that's what I want to see from the boys. Which would make sense to have like a guy like Martinez come into this game or, or Mueller, who they're too young to care what the altitude is, right? They're still going to run, they're still going to do the job. Um, they have the endurance to do it. Might be a, might be a wise move. Anybody that goes up there to as supporters, trust me, you'll feel the air while you're singing. It's real. It really is. 
Uh, all right. Looks like we've got a couple more comments. I'm going to go to the comments right now, see what else we got coming for you guys. And then you know how it goes on this show. We wrap things up. All right. Um, moving on. Not a whole lot. I do see Dave loving the fact that this weekend's game is a uh, 2100 uh, Central European time start. <laughs> Bam is, of course, disagreeing with you from his Australian uh, perspective. 7 a.m. What time is the game kicking off over there, sir? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. And, of course, for the locals, it's kind of cool. We start, what, 1 o'clock? 1 o'clock. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, midday game for us. I will say this. It is nice also for the boys going to Colorado because they don't have to go play in 35-degree weather at night, Right. It's earlier in the day. The sun is still up. The weather's wet, like in the 60s, low 60s, maybe 50s, but it ain't freezing. Now, the low for the night, 35. It's good. It's not a night game. There's enough weather brutality we've dealt with this year. We don't want to deal with that again. Um, and no no, no harsh weather in the forecast either, so that that's good too. Day game, nice weather. Partly cloudy. Should be good. It is Denver, though. That weather could change in two days, but yeah, it sounds like it won't. So good news there. All right. Those are the comments that I see. Of course, you want to get your membership for 3252. It's um, 3252, the 3252.net uh, slash membership. Make it happen if you got it. Go for it, guys. Um, it's worth it. Trust me. I got, I got the whole like pack thing, the big one, and everything I got was was on point clean a little clear bag which you really do need it at the at bmo this year so there it is all right so let's wrap things up call this one and get you guys all set and on your way for another amazing weekend to watch our boys play on to final thoughts i'm gonna go to araceli first on this one your final thoughts uh my final thoughts is i'm uh, wishing everyone a very fun weekend. It is Easter weekend. So regardless if you're traveling to Colorado or celebrating back in LA, um, just have a great time, honestly. And if you are traveling to Colorado, safe travels to all that go. And do be a little weary of the altitude if you've never been before, because that altitude, it's seriously no joke, you guys. And I'm not trying to say that to scare anyone, obviously. I covered a game there last year and running around almost 90 minutes in that altitude. It, it will get to you, even if you're just simply walking. I had to run. Imagine how I felt. <laughs> but regardless, yeah. I'm. Like I said, I'm just wishing everyone safe travels if you do go. If not, have fun at the watch parties. And, of course, LUFC 2 is that Sunday. I highly recommend everyone check them out. Again, it will kick off is at um, 5 o'clock Pacific time, and it will be on Apple TV. There you go, guys. There it is enjoy the match thank you aerosol and yes it's real altitude is real all right bam final thoughts sir final thoughts everyone that's going to the away game be safe look after each other all that kind of stuff everyone that's going to watch parties back in la enjoy the day it is it's a weekend a lot more people will be out traveling going to see families and all that leave it a little bit early drive safe on the roads um have you gonna have any, anything intoxications in your body don't drive catch an uber catch a lift catch a cab catch a ride along with a mate you know or be that one that drives everyone and has a day off without any, anything um and while you're doing that remember talk to your mates have, conversations can save a life you know it's okay to not to be okay mental health is major i know i harp on it every episode but it is major people's mental health it can cause irreversible damage to not just them but to their families and friends so look after each other and stay safe this easter well said sir well said especially on a holiday weekend look out for each other tony um just you know have fun this weekend uh Save for the next spot. I was gonna say something, but I was like, I'll save for the next spot. Uh just be safe out there, you know, drink responsibly. 
and just keep you know supporting it you again uh, if you're still looking for you know a supporter club or you want to be into a supporter group sorry or you're looking for, to be in the supporter culture you know again this is the perfect opportunity with watch parties to you know kind of dabble and see what it's like to be to see what it is um of course we'll post more of all the watch parties coming through as well as 3252 the official instagram site will post all the watch parties as well and you know it's a good way to not just support our team but also as most of everyone knows who are part of supporter groups is also a great way to give back to community if you've never done it before you know that's the our major goal in not just 3252, but just all of this, all the groups in the 3252 is just to give back to our community and make it a better place. So we leave it better for the future as best as we can. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like that with a lot of things in the world, but that's what we're trying to do. At least have Los Angeles still have its culture. It's everything that makes Los Angeles, Los Angeles and, you know, leave it better for the future. So with that being said, you know, just, Check it out. Also, give back if you can. And, you know, as Batman always says, check out when you mates. You never know what someone's going through. Well said, sir. Build it, don't break it. That's how it works as a supporter group here, uh, especially at 3252. We build our community up. Uh, that is the idea. So definitely jump in when you can um, to help out. Uh, for me to you guys, again, have a great holiday weekend. Enjoy the game on Saturday. Enjoy it responsibly. Um, and get ready for next week because, boy, we got to get through this game, and then it's 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 go time, and it's going to be a very busy week next week. So enjoy this one. Have a good time with it. Let's get it going. All right, Araceli, final word of the day. Stay golden. Bam. Stay golden. Tony. Stay golden, Los Angeles. And for me, to all of you, Stay gold in Los Angeles. Thank you for listening to the Heart of LAFC. Make sure to leave us a rating and review on iTunes or Stitcher. Shoulder to shoulder, the black and gold is taking over.